What's going on guys, no guides here, welcome back to another video. Now one question I get asked a lot is, how on earth can I afford this team if I don't trade? I barely play the games, like 15 games a week. I don't do squad battles, I don't trade, I don't open packs, FIFA points. So how on earth do I get this team? Well, it's simple. In fact, I don't even play rivals. I don't even play foot champions. I deliberately stop. Apart from the first week, I got 27. Got my verified. Call it a day. I've not played since. I've been getting gold three. The truth is, is that you're doing 99% of the right things. You're just making the wrong decisions. There's small things like buying on, not buying on Thursday, buying on Sunday where it's cheaper. And then obviously get selling on Thursday, which is the most expensive point of the market before weekend league. Certain things like SBCs. Now, SBCs are probably by far the biggest coin stick. Now, ignore the few points in the top left. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but that's got nothing to do. Um, that I got that early. I spent $20 a few points when a game came out and that was about it. There was no benefit. I'll explain that in a second though. But the most important thing is these, these I'll be honest, these SBCs. Listen, EA, they look, they're a smart company, man. These guys top top level these guys are honestly geniuses they're the marketing gurus okay they know they release a card that will be redundant in two weeks time this Firmino card is he worth it it's a debatable i think he's a very good card don't get me wrong i would do him if you got five million coins but this is the thing if you haven't got five million coins he released this card and you'd be like i want Firmino. you end up doing him then what happens is you're like oh you know what i haven't got enough players for him let me just spend 100k or 200k and i got some untradeable some red picks let me chuck them all in there as well what realistically happens is, is that you end up spending more money and losing more money. And do you know what? I've done three SPCs this year. Three SPCs I've done and two of them I've regretted it. I've done a towel, which is a play I do not regret. A towel has been, a, it got cost 20k. It's a different, different, different world. 20k it costs, right? It's nothing, right? It's peanuts, yeah? Marquinhos, 200k. Garbage. No, he's a top, no, no, no. To be fair, he's a top tier player. Um, if you park the bus or you play defensive, he's really, really good. But if you're like me, I like to play very, very top tier, aggressive, you know, pressing manually all the time. He's not the player I want to use. He's not a bad player, though. I only did it mainly because the hyperlink to Neymar and Alessandrini. Alessandrini, I spent nothing on. Um, that was completely all untradeables. And Marquinhos, I spent about 100k. And I think if I've done, just done three SPCs, you've probably done so much more. So that's the first thing. Stop doing SPCs. And number, number two is if you're buying and selling a team, you got to be smart. As I said, buy on Sunday when people are getting mad saying they're weekend league teams. Sell on Thursday. Thursday is when players are at the highest. A good example I'm going to show you is the Messi, right? So Messi, for example, his cheapest price, I don't know what it is, right? Let's say 300, 400. Don't be lazy. Like legit, it takes, I'm, I'm a lazy buyer as well, but I'm lazy, I'm lazy to, to within a reason. I will normally go to his max buy now and I'll just try to push it up. And then whatever card is available, I'll, on, for example, on Sunday of 379, I might refresh it a couple of times, try to get one with Hunter. That's what I would do. Then when you sell it on Thursday, there's a big chance you probably make money because you'll be 400k. Worst case scenario, you, may, you break even. That is the way you buy and sell teams. But don't just aimlessly go. I mean, even when you sell a card in market, just go and flip it and check the price. People are losing a lot because they're changing teams, which is completely fine. But check the prices. I mean, I'm not joking. It takes 10 seconds. You know, the type of player's name, especially someone like Ronaldo, who's a really, really top tier card. You don't want to be losing 5% on him. And that's the thing. Stop buying high ticket items like Ronaldo and Mbappe, selling Mbappe, buying Ronaldo because Ronaldo is not that good. And you think, oh, yeah, Neymar's going to carry me. Just keep the cards. A lot of people, they blame the cards for the performance. But in truth, it's not really their players. It's mainly the performance themselves. Um, one thing I was going to say in terms of actual rewards and cards. Now, I only play to goal three. Now, you're going to be surprised with this, right? I don't have time to play the game. I spend most of my time editing. I'm not a FIFA streamer. I wish I was. Um, I'm not like a streamer. I stream a couple of games here and there. I play 14 games in a weekend league. To prove it to you, I'll show you my monthly. Um, as you can see over here, this is my monthly. Um, 54, 56 games, sorry, should I say. Divided by four, uh, obviously four weeks in a month. That is 14 wins. I literally get 14 wins and that's it. I take my 30k and the two other wherever packs they are and that's it, I call it a day. In Rivals, what I end up doing is I don't even play Rivals. In fact, I relegated myself to Division 2 because I'll be honest, um, I was in Division 1 and it was a bit of a fast how hard it is. But I literally, I'll just play 14 games in the weekend league, end up becoming like silver, silver 4 and I might pay like two, one or two or three games extra if I'm recording a video that week. So I play maybe 17 games 
in the entire week. I make about 130k realistically. 30k from foot champions, obviously the coin wise, the couple of packs, the rivals, and just if I was going to do something else, I would say about 100k I roughly make just by doing the bare minimum. That is how much you should be making. But you're not taking into account the coins. There's no fitness cards this year. I wish there was fitness cards. In my opinion, it's a good way of taking money out of the economy. Um, EA tax, I just don't think it's not really that. I think the fitness cards will really kept the economy going. It's so easy to get a team now. If you got place match into Division 2, you could get 200k when the game came out. So I don't understand how people are getting, I suppose you can say, teams, worse teams than last year, where I suppose you can say it was harder last year because you didn't get Division Rival coins as well and there was fitness cards. So you should be having more money at this stage as opposed to last year, assuming you didn't pack anyone good. I've not packed anyone good, by the way. In all fairness, I did pack Mbappe, but I sold Mbappe to buy Ronaldo. Um, so, in fact, if you took out Ronaldo from this team, this team should be very much affordable. You see that the SPCs, um, I've got, of course, I bought Neymar for 1 million. Um, I bought Quadrado for 200k. I still spent a lot of money on some of these top tier players, but you can see the team is still worth over 2 million coins uh, without Ronaldo. So you should realistically have 3 million coins from doing the bare minimum. And in fact, I'm probably going to have more than that because I got 100k surplus. And then, of course, I do have on the store, um, I do have, of course, um, all those uh, packs that I've been saving for quite a long time now for Team of the Year. So that is just something to bear in mind. So whenever you're thinking about now going into your weekend league, um, play every, if you can to Gold 1. If you can, obviously, Gold 1 is probably the optimum point, I would say, because uh, Reds are not that good. Uh, but just be smart with your money. Uh, one thing I want to say as well is when it comes to trading, I don't trade. I don't have time to trade. I'm pretty sure you guys don't have time to trade. You might see these trading patrons and look, they're going to teach you. I mean, if you see a trading patron, do I think they're worth it? If you really want to get better at trading, yes, you can kind of learn from them and you know who to buy and when they do the thinking for you. If you want to trade yourself, then you can do it. Realistically speaking, you have to find the cards yourself. It takes some time, realistically speaking. I don't have time to trade. I'm pretty sure you're the same. I'm a gameplay guy. I don't even, I don't even care about trading. What I want to do is play the game. So all you got to do is just be smart. Or, as I said, one thing I was going to say is, finally, is if you have untradeables, don't feel like you need to do the SPC for the sake of it. Don't, you know, these SPCs, look at these Icon SPCs, right? These Icon SPCs are frauds. It's fraudulent behavior to do this. For that, Hero, the guy, a guy's SPC costs the same price on the market. What people do is like, oh, you know what, let me do this Hero card, end up putting coins in him. Um, and his untradeables, you end up doing them, then you lost your mind. And when a card actually comes out, someone like, yeah, let's say Marquinhos or Firmino and you need the untradeables then, or even like an icon SPC like Eusebio when he comes out eventually or hopefully, then that time it'll be gone. So you do got to bear that in mind. Um, but that is just kind of my my kind of my brief advice on how to get really a good team. So you don't need to win. You don't need to get a lead. You don't need to get even get gold one. Just get gold three. Be smart. If you're going to change your team, just sell your, like if a player costs 1.3 million, check how much you cost and sell him for that price. You know, just be very, very smart about it. And that's what I wanted to say just in terms of that. And just to give you an example, when I pack someone, I just list them on a market. If I really wanted, I would list the minimum price, but just do that and just be very smart about how you go about your coins. Um, realistically speaking, now if you're playing 14 to 17 games every single week, you should realistically have a 2 million coin team by now. Even if you're in division five, I don't think there's really that much. Um, you know, I've packed nothing, as I said, apart from the Mbappe that I packed earlier, but they made no benefit. You're going to say, oh, Mbappe probably helped your team out a lot. No, Mbappe didn't even help my team out whatsoever. Gold Benyeda carried me, which cost me out 20k. Um, but that's just kind of my advice on um, how to basically have the most amount of money and how to actually make money, should I say. But anyway, thanks for watching, boys. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.